This is the Weather Extreme video, the afternoon edition for Tuesday, October 4th. I'm James Spam, Alabama dry, but a big change to cool air coming up over the weekend and early next week as we catch cool air coming down the backside of Hurricane Matthew. And Matthew is the talk of the weather world. How will that impact the South Atlantic coast of the United States? Let's go in there and dive in and discuss all these things. Water vapor satellite view, cold trough back in the western states. Mountain snow, in parts of Montana today. That's digging southward, but around here, just a dry air mass and fairly toasty for an October day. Temperatures in the 80s, Birmingham and Gadsden, 88, Tuscaloosa, 86, Anniston, 87. Uh, we'll stay in the 80s through Friday, but for the weekend, much cooler air, especially on Sunday. And around the nation, look at the cold air back in the western states. Only 30s, 40s, 50s out west, but uh, it's going to take a while before that reaches us. Again, we'll feel that in about five days. On the watch warning map, frost advisories for parts of Nebraska, Colorado, and Kansas. Looks like winter storm warnings in effect for parts of Montana because of snow, but the east is quiet. Active convection possible later today and tonight over Kansas and parts of Oklahoma and some of the adjacent states. There is an enhanced risk of severe weather over parts of eastern Kansas. The standard slight risk running up into Iowa. Tomorrow, marginal risk of severe weather for the heartland around Kansas City and Wichita. And on day three, which is Thursday, a risk of severe weather from near Amarillo up to Des Moines. Rain for the next seven days. How about nothing? Just not happening. Love to get some. We need some. Drought conditions will worsen. Needless to say, conserve water. Avoid outdoor burning if possible until something breaks, but uh, looks like rain chances will stay very low on through mid-month. But this is where the action is, the tropics. Uh, first off, there's a new wave that's to the east of the Windward Islands, not expected to develop in the short term. Got a new system on the board, Nicole. Tropical storm northeast of the Leeward Islands. Top winds 50 miles an hour moving northwest. This will likely meander about as the steering currents collapse and not affect any land mass. Uh, we'll watch that just in case, but I don't think that's going to be an issue for land. But obviously, this one is. Matthew just didn't weaken much after crossing the uh, southwestern peninsula of Haiti. The uh, maximum sustained winds are still 145 miles per hour. Pretty impressive structure even after encountering Haiti in the high terrain there. Uh, next up, it's the uh, eastern tip of Cuba, and that eye will be battering that far eastern tip over the next uh, 8 to 12 hours. Modeling on Matthew, tropical models, uh, they want to uh, keep this the, the center a little east of Florida, and then ultimately maybe coming in up toward Cape Fear, uh, North Carolina. A really good analog to this is Floyd back in 1999. The ensemble coming off the GFS, pretty much the same idea, parallel to the Florida coast, and then possible landfall north of Charleston up toward Cape Fear. And then maybe far enough out not to bother New England. Thought I'd show you the 12Z looks first off off the GFS. This is Friday morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Uh, it's got Matthew a little east of Cape Canaveral. And again, this is reminiscent of Floyd, but, but the European... It's farther west. It's got the thing basically on the coastline. And obviously, that's a more problematic situation for the coast. Uh, the difference in 50 miles with the eye of this thing is going to make a huge impact difference. Go back to the GFS. If it stays offshore like that, kind of like Floyd, really, Floyd didn't do a whole lot of severe damage in Florida. There was little inland impact, and even on the immediate coast, it wasn't nearly as bad as people expected as the, the Florida coast was on that good west side. But again, back to the European, if this is right and that thing jogs inland, that's going to be very problematic. So, uh, you know, again, there's, there's still some uncertainty and, and 50, 100 miles make a huge difference in the impact. Try The guidance, the intensity guidance, the good news after about 84 hours, uh, gets over cooler water, some shear involved. This thing should begin to weaken a bit. Here's the official track from the Hurricane Center. And again, this is very much like Floyd in 1999. Major hurricane coming up through the Bahamas. Uh, Friday morning, it's a major hurricane just east of Daytona Beach. 
kind of comes inland up around Cape Fear. And with Floyd, the biggest damage was in North Carolina once that thing got inland over eastern North Carolina. Um, and it should be weakening at that point. And then uh, the Hurricane Center has it south of Long Island Sunday morning. So the, the general idea, the, the consistency is pretty good. But again, 50, 100 miles placement of that eye is going to make a huge impact difference. So let's check modeling here. This is the GFS, the 12Z run, valid tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Nice cold trough in the western states. But for us, we'll stay mostly sunny, very warm, highs mid to upper 80s. Matthew is coming through the Bahamas. Thursday, we're dry. Highs mid-80s, both the NAM and the GFS are at 85. Matthew just east of Miami. Friday, Matthew just east of Daytona Beach. I mean barely east of Daytona Beach. But again, for us, we're dry, mostly sunny with a high in the low 80s. And then Saturday, as the weekend begins, Matthew is near or just north of Charleston, coming up toward Wilmington and Cape Fear. And for us, notice the pressure gradient tightens up. That's going to be a pretty windy day if this verifies. And we start to turn cooler with highs dropping back in the middle 70s. And Sunday, Matthew is east of Chesapeake Bay. We're in a cool air mass. The new GFS coming in with a high of only 69. Looks like many places over North Alabama will stay in the 60s. We start the day well down in the 40s. And Monday, a cold morning for this time of the year with 40s likely, maybe some upper 30s for the colder pockets. And the sky will be sunny with a high in the 70s. And uh, Matthew is off the board. Here's a week from today, Tuesday the 11th. Still got ridging down here. We still got a dry air mass, just sunny and pleasant weather for much of next week. This is the end of the forecast period, Friday, October 14th. Again, uh, nothing to suggest any rain with that upper pattern. A dry air mass stays in place, and again, it's just rain-free. Rain for the next 10 days coming off the GFS. We are in that desert, Alabama, Mississippi, much of Georgia, nothing. I mean nothing. So again, drought conditions will worsen. Numbers coming off the GFS. You can see those numbers coming down this weekend. And next week, highs around 80 and lows in the 50s. That's not too far from average for this time of the year. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this afternoon. We'll have notes in the blog. The next video here by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. If you can't catch us this evening on the live stream or the television side, ABC 3340 News at 4, 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening and God bless.